I finally broke free from Mac OS, my new Linux daily driver, Pop OS plus GNOME. Are you an ex Mac OS user feeling boxed in by Apple's ecosystem? I was, until I found a Linux setup that didn't just replace Mac OS, it improved my day to day. Today, I'll show my complete daily driver, the distro, desktop environment, apps, tweaks, and why this move saved me money and boosted productivity. If you're curious about switching, you'll want to see this. The Apple Exodus, why I left Mac OS. Short personal story. The tipping point that pushed me away, rising costs, tighter platform restrictions, desire for control or customization. Quick reassurances. The common fears, software gaps, driver headaches, are solvable, and I'll walk through how I solved them. My daily driver revealed. Distro, Pop OS, chosen for a clean, polished GNOME experience, first-class hardware support, and built-in productivity tools. Pop OS ships with sensible defaults for power users and makes driver management and installs straightforward. Desktop, GNOME with Pop OS refinements, Familiar, focused workspace layout that's easy for former macOS users to adapt to. PopOS also includes an automatic tiling mode that lets you snap into a more keyboard-first workflow in seconds. Installation and hardware notes. System requirements are modest. PopOS provides images for common Intel AMD and NVIDIA setups and has clear installer docs. In practice, my laptop's Wi-Fi, GPU, and trackpad worked with minimal driver hunting. Follow the official install guide and verify the ISO checksum before flashing. Replacing Mac OS apps. Practical alternatives. Video editing. Final Cut Pro, Linux. DaVinci Resolve is a professional, full-featured editor that has an official Linux build and is used in pro post workflows. It's my go-to for color grading and heavy editing work. Note that Resolve's Linux install can have GPU and distro caveats, so check hardware compatibility. NVIDIA is commonly recommended. Kden Live and Blender are great free alternatives for fast edits, quick cuts, and motion work. Kden Live in particular is under active development and now ships modern UX improvements useful for creators. Audio and music production. Logic Pro, Linux, Ardor, open source, and Reaper, commercial but affordable, are robust multi-track DAWs on Linux. Both handle recording, mixing, and plug-in workflows well. For electronic music producers, Bitwig and LMMS are also solid options. Everyday Productivity, Mail, Calendar, and Notes. Thunderbird, plus Extension Ecosystem, Evolution, and GNOME Calendar integrate cleanly with online accounts. Browser and Cloud Apps, Google Workspace, Office 365 Web, remain available. File Syncing, GNOME Online Accounts can integrate Google Drive into the File Manager. For full, scriptable mounts and advanced workflows, I use rclone. Workflow. Matching and improving macOS productivity. Window management. Pop OS's automatic tiling and keyboard shortcuts let me snap windows and tile apps without extra tools. Once you memorize a few keys, it's faster than manually resizing macOS windows. Hotkeys and automation. GNOME shortcuts plus small shell scripts or a tiny automator style setup with Exto tool or WM control Cover the macOS keyboard automation you miss. Scripting and extensibility. Everything is open. I can script backups, run containerized apps, and tune my environment in ways macOS won't let me. Cloud and continuity. Google Drive. Use GNOME online accounts for quick access in Nautilus, or rclone to mount and script sync behavior for heavier workflows. This keeps my files usable across devices without vendor lock-in. Privacy-first cloud. If you prefer privacy-focused providers, Proton, NextCloud, Proton Drive is actively improving but still maturing on Linux. Many users use the web app or community clients while Proton expands official support. Consider NextCloud or SyncThing for local-first encrypted sync. 
The real surprises, what I gained. Responsiveness and longevity. Older hardware feels snappier. Kernel and compositor choices let you optimize for performance in ways macOS doesn't expose. Customization. From keyboard layouts to window rules to custom themes, everything is tweakable. Cost and freedom. No app store lock-ins, fewer subscription pressures, and many high-quality free tools. The trade-offs. Certain macOS exclusive apps, some Creative Suite features, iMessage continuity, don't have one-to-one -one Linux replacements. For messaging, you can use Signal or Telegram. For niche macOS apps, consider keeping a small macOS device or running a VM for that one edge case. Professional apps like DaVinci Resolve work great, but may require specific GPUs or containerized installs. Always check vendor guidance before committing a project. Who this is for. Great if you want control, customization, or to get more life out of existing hardware. Maybe skip if you rely on a single macOS-only piece of software that has no workable Linux substitute. Final verdict. Switching from macOS to a Linux daily driver isn't downgrade. It's a trade that many ex-Mac users find liberating.